You're being a good boy today, buddy. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you stink, though. You need a bath. You were rolling around in something outside. You stay. So today, I'm going to go ahead and manufacture and clean up the screws, the bolt that I have to uh, modify for the vise. I'm also going to take down uh, the bolt heads for the vise jaws, and I'm going to start smoothing out casting lines and stuff like that on the body. So... Remy's going to stick around for more support, aren't you, buddy? Yeah? You're going to keep me company? All right. Go ahead. It's okay. Go. Get it. Good boy. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoy watching. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and chase the threads on every threaded piece of the vise. I don't have something large enough to do the lead screw, but the lead screw, it, it, it seems fine. I need to manufacture this piece. And what I've done is I've gone to the hardware store, I found a bolt that is the same thread pattern. I'm gonna cut that bolt, try to file it down and then cut a slot in it. And unfortunately, screws not fixable. So I went to the hardware store and found the closest thing that they had but it is a little bit tall and I have to take it. It's just barely tall. So I'm going to take just a touch off of the top of it, but the screw body or the threads itself are a little long. So I'm going to have to take care of that as well. That's my next process. Perfect. Nice and smooth now. Now I just need to do that with all of them. So this is the uh, screw that was giving me such a problem. And I can tell it feels like there's a lot of garbage in these threads. I think that's bottomed out. Yeah. So let's take a look and see how much trash comes out oh yeah it's it's dirty look at that just all that garbage inside the screw hole I don't even know how that's possible whoever had this vice Definitely did not take care of it. Like in my vice maintenance video, I wipe my vices down after each use and I pull them apart, service them at least every six months so that, man, you don't have this problem if you take care of your tools. As you can tell, I went ahead and taped the threads off. Don't know that that's going to help, but I'm hopeful. I'm going to hack all this bolt off so I can put it in a I don't have a metal lathe but the shopsmith is a wood lathe but it has multi different speeds and torque settings so I'm going to try to do that get this chucked up. Like I said, I hope that this tape helps protect the threads. We 
gonna find out. I bought an extra bolt just in case I mess this one up, so. This is something I've never tried before. I just figured it would work. It might save me a little bit of money from buying some specialty hardware. So first thing I have to do, I have to actually shorten this bolt. I should have hacksawed it a little shorter, but I need to shorten the bolt and then and then do the taper. A little bit more and then I start tapering. Turn it down a little bit too much, but I think that is going to work. Pull it out and get the overall dimensions. I said if it doesn't work, I got another bolt I can try again. Pretty close. Uh, make it a little bit shorter. I think we'll be good to go. So the vise is fresh out of Evaporest. I rinsed it off, sprayed it down with WD-40 to keep it from flash rusting. On here, I, I know that this vise, I think they started making them in the 50s, early 50s, but this is uh, dated 4 of 73. So that's when this was made. I really wish who had this before hadn't damaged it so much. They were really rough on this vice. I'm, I'm lucky it hasn't been broken in that one spot I talked about earlier. Um, I think this piece turned out really good. It fits. Uh, I turned down the nut a little bit to match the dimensions of the stock ones. And on all of the uh, jaw screws, uh, I turned the faces of them down and I'm not sure how well you can tell, but they fit very nicely. 
So my next process is basically just to take the vise. I'm going to take the files and clean up the casting lines and any imperfections in it. Start getting it dressed up to paint. And then I'm going to do something a little different with this. I got some auto body filler. I've never tried that before. Um, I didn't have enough metal putty and there, there's quite a bit that I need to fill in. So I'm going to try the auto body filler and then we're going to paint this. So I honestly do enjoy hand filing, um, <clears throat> which I will do a lot on this vise. But I did get a new tool and I'm going to try it out as well. Um, a pneumatic uh, grinder but like I said I don't mind I really enjoy the process of hand filing it helps me relax all my projects help me relax and almost meditate um, gives me uh, a sense of being closer to the project just something I enjoy doing In a lot of ways, this is almost like uh, sharpening an axe. I can feel the high spots and I can see them in the reflection of the light above me. So I know I can feel and see where I need to take off material or where I want. To, I don't need to take off material from this. I want to take off material from this just to make it a little bit nicer. If y'all can tell on video or not, but it's a rough area right here. That I'm gonna try to even out. The more the closer that I can get to where I want it, I'm thinking that the less work I'll have to do with the body filler. So that's my goal. I'm just going to go over the entire vise, any casting flaws, anything that I don't want to see in the final project. I'm going to remove that <clears throat> to make the next process easier. And that's really, really rough. That's going to take some work. I did put the vise back together for the next process. Um, See how the jaws are a little proud? I'm going to try to clean them up enough to not remove any uh, without taking them down all the way. Eventually, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to have a new set of jaws made for this. And I have a different uh, lead screw handle that I was going to use on a different project, but I think it would look great on this. So I'm going to take this outside. I'm going to hit it with a die grinder and some different abrasives, try to smooth some stuff up. I'm going to do my best not to get rid of any of the markings. Of course, I'm afraid those might um, disappear with paint, so I may not even paint. Man, we're going to have to see what happens. You know how it goes. The projects speak to me, and I try to listen. Taking Remy for a walk. So he can do his business. And after he does his business, we're going to do some training. Isn't that right, buddy? Remy. Whoa, there's a squirrel. Oh, yeah. That is why Remy needs to, I need to properly train him. Because if I hadn't had him on a leash, he'd be gone and halfway up that tree. <laughs> well, he would be at the tree. Uh, I don't know if you can tell how rough and uneven this is. I'm going to try to smooth this up with the die grinder, take out some casting lines. Uh, I'm going to true up the sides of the jaws, the anvil, 
and anything that I can't true up with the die grinder I'll go back inside and finish truing it up with hand files. So one thing in my favor is I don't have to make it completely perfect because I am going to come back with uh, auto body filler and smooth it out. Hey, Remy, quit chasing that cat for a second. Come here. I need to talk to you. I need your opinion. Hey, buddy. I need your opinion on something. I messed up. You know how a lot of times I think I'm recording, but I'm not? Yeah, I know. I did it again. I know. You think I would learn, but I didn't. So, unfortunately... Um, a lot of the cleanup on the vice I thought I was recording and I wasn't and I was recording when I didn't think I was so lost that footage and it's not like I can just go back and record again but one thing that I've been I don't know pondering I would really like to keep the visibility of the manufacture date and the faint stamp but because I'm going to go over the top with this, that would mean I'd have to leave this entire section completely unpainted and I wouldn't be able to repair all the damage. So I think I'm going to paint it and just cover that up. Yeah, I'm still floundering back and forth between the two decisions. I have already sprayed the vise down with parts cleaner, um, but I'm just going to go over it again. I ran out of parts cleaner, so I'm going to go over it with some metal spirits just to make sure everything's nice and clean. It's still a little bit of nastiness coming off. I say nastiness, a little discoloration coming off. You want to clean everything until it's coming out clean you know your rag doesn't look dirty so that's all I'm doing now and then I'm gonna mask everything off <clears throat> I said I did spray this down with parts cleaner and use the compressor to blow it dry but I was running out of parts cleaner and didn't um, <clears throat> didn't get it as clean see didn't get it as clean as I had wanted to I think a lot of this junk came out of the screw holes when I hit it with the air compressor to blow dry everything off. Oh yeah, that's nasty. Honestly, just as long as that's clean enough to have tape stick to it, I think it'd be all right because I'm not gonna paint that portion of it. But all the parts that need to be painted, I want them to be 
extremely clean so that the primer sticks and the body filler sticks. Normally I would use uh, JB Weld on here um, because I think it's more durable than auto body filler. I mean, I don't know because I've never used uh, Bondo before, but since this is not a hard use vice, I wanted to try using body filler. Uh, it's going to be the first time I've ever used body filler. And we'll see what happens. If it doesn't come out right, I know a guy that can completely strip it and redo it. That guy being me. Oh yeah, starting to get some flash rust already. I know this video is getting a little long. So let's just fast forward through it so you don't have to watch me wipe and caress a vice down. I mean, unless you're into that. I'm going to get this taped up and get a coat of primer on it as soon as possible because it's already started to flash rust on me. And taping is just a necessary evil. Nobody likes it. It's just something that has to be done. So, <laughs> yeah. Put some music on if you can. And just try to enjoy the process. <laughs> if anybody can enjoy taping. It is not, it is not a fun process by any means. It's just time consuming and meticulous. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Now, if you actually enjoy the process of taping, let us know in the comments. Tell us any of your tricks or tips so that maybe anybody watching or even myself can find some enjoyment in it. I mean, I, I find enjoyment in it because it leads to the finished product, but it's just not my favorite thing to do by any means and part of it is because you got to wear gloves not to get oils on your project and then the tape doesn't want to come off your gloves and that's just one reason I don't like taping
done. Come here, Remy. Come on. Get up here. Good boy. All right. See it. Remington, you better stay. Good boy. Stay. Stay. All the file work and prep work. Um, it took me 59 minutes and 41 seconds to tape off that vise. It's outside right now. I got a coat of primer on it and it's drying. Good boy. Stay. Um, I got a color that I want to paint the vise. You want to lay down? You decided to go ahead and lay down? Okay, you can lay down. As long as you're comfortable and you're staying. I'm cool with that. Good lay down. Good down, buddy. Good down. Stay. I'm going to paint the vise a color you don't see a whole lot of vices. And I think it's going to be cool. So, thanks for watching. Come back for part three. Uh, I should have that video completed and up the following week. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Thanks a lot. Good boy. Come on. Jump. You can do it. Jump, buddy. Come on. You went down. Get down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jump. Come on. Jump. Oh, yeah. See, I got you. You're not going to fall. you just a little chicken. All right, go. You're being unruly today. You know that? You're just being a punk. Just being a punk.